you are exiles. We are the exiles. We are the fallen. You made the decision to go after strange flesh. This is about one thing. This is about us being consumed by another race. Let's get them in a host body system so we can destroy them. You're a kingdom divided. You're good and evil. You are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. To rectify that situation, you got to be turned up. It's how you know that you know Jesus. And if it doesn't add up to the scriptures, then it's not true. And if it doesn't add up to the scriptures, then it's not true. Peace and grace, guys. Welcome to This Is It, 4321 Before the Fire. Um, First things first, uh, I'm going to put this video up. And then tonight, I'm going to do a communion video. So if you're ready for tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I will go ahead and we're going to have communion. After I do the video that I'm doing right now, I will give you a very important thing to do before you ever take communion. You're supposed to self-inspect. And um, the last couple of videos I did um, trying to show everybody the language of angels while using a corrupt judge as an example by showing you that the bond that was $454 million, which is complete insanity, was woven into the, the, the language of angels. Because 454 in the Bible means to have lost one's mind, to act in a way that is irrational due to hatred. And that's everything that that bond was about. It was irrational. It was done out of hatred for another person. And then I showed you a clip where and I'm going to have to go read the judge's name. I'm sorry. I keep saying like in in Ragan. I, I could care less. I just I find it difficult to listen to the guy because he's so pompous and he thinks he's such. He thinks he's just an authority over you and over me. Because if you're wearing a red sweater instead of a blue sweater, he can make a different decision. Even all all the facts and all the material evidence is identical. But. If you're wearing a red sweater instead of a blue sweater, well, is it the same? And I was trying to make a point that this other race of beings, the serpent race, their color is blue. They are identified as blue bloods, the blue race. Scorpions have blue blood, by the way. And so do uh, octopuses and some other uh, animals that have copper in their blood. However, the point I was trying to make is this guy that's obviously corrupt, he is applying one set of rules to this guy named Donald Trump who is being targeted unjustly. And if you're any, if you got any red blood in you at all, you're going to go, yeah, he is unjustly targeted. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about Trump. I don't care about that. The point is there is an unjust attempt to destroy someone because he wants to decide if they're wearing a red sweater or a blue sweater and blue represents the team that he serves. Okay. Now that being said, it was a very interesting thing for me to get to see a lot of the responses. So I got to see the hearts of a lot of people that come to this channel and claim to understand what I'm showing you. I'm showing you that you're an angel and you got caught in a trap called the host body because you sinned against the most high. See, if you think you're here for any other reason than because you sinned, then you haven't read your Bible. Why do you think you have to be converted? Why? Who gave Jacob to the robbers and Israel to the spoiler? Was it not the Lord against whom we have sinned? Why do you think you have to get redeemed? Because you you broke a relationship with your God, your creator. The word redeemed is and the and to get restored and to be reconciled back to your creator. By definition, reconciliation is the reestablishment of a relationship that has been broken. So you had to have a relationship before this. And now you're trying to be 
reconciled back to him through the cross because the one that you sinned against, he came into the system that you're a slave in now. So now you're a slave and you have a host body. And the one that runs the host body system uh, that even told Jesus, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give it all to you. It's mine to give. All authority has been given to me. That's what Satan said to Jesus. So Jesus is who? El, the almighty God in the flesh. But once you come into the system called the flesh, once you're here, that authority has been given to who? Satan, because you got a host body and uh, Lucifer is the anointed cherub that covereth. And so you have to you have to pay up. You got your host body, but he wants your soul. And the only one that can buy back your soul is Jesus on the cross. That's why he was crucified in the dead sinner between Jesmus and Desmus, representing you. Because you are Jesmus and Desmus. You're good and evil. There was one guy that was... Uh, saying horrible things to Jesus on the cross, like, hey, why don't you get us down off the cross if you're really the Messiah? And the other guy was saying, hey, why don't you shut up? We deserve our punishment. So there is two different guys, one on each side. One guy was uh, correct. The other guy was only worried about himself. And then Jesus says to the one that says, remember me when you come into my, your kingdom. He says, verily I say unto you, today you'll be with me in paradise. Because he represents, the guy that said that represents the part of you that needs to reach out to Christ and say, I'm guilty as charged. He said, we deserve our punishment, but he's done nothing, which is the whole system. So El, the Almighty God, will come into the flesh in the form of Emmanuel, with us is El, the Almighty God, die on a cross to buy you back because you're an Elohim. See, you're an Elohim. You're one of the gods angels. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 34, do not your own scriptures say, I have said you are gods. He said it to everyone that was going to stone him. The Pharisees were there. The Jews were there. They were going to stone Jesus. And he said, wait a minute, for what good works do you stone me? And they said, for, for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself equal to God. And Jesus said, whoa, wait a minute. Don't your own scriptures say, I have said you are gods. So if you're gods and the scriptures can't be broken, why do you marvel that I say I'm the son of God? Like, what's the big deal? Y'all are gods. He was quoting Psalm 82. Psalm 82. I have said you are Elohim, gods, angels, magistrates, but you're going to die like men. So see, you're a, a god, an angel. That's what your essence is. Your eternal essence is an angelic essence. And the angel of the bottomless pit wants to destroy it. Now, our father in heaven, he's the father of light. And he says he is a fountain of life. Yes or no? He is a fountain of life. Well, what about the, the angel of death? What about the angel in the pit, the destroying angel? He's the angel of death. One gives life, and one takes life. I'm going to show you something today that's going to make your jaw pop open. This is what the Lord showed me this morning. I'll show it to you right now. But then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to let you watch an older video that Zach stitched together. It's been on Zach's channel. But he took some older clips where I was explaining to everybody the simplicity of you have to know who you're praying to. The simplicity of knowing God and the scriptures that back it up. The Bible says those who worship me must worship me in what? Spirit and in truth. So you have to be born again and you have to be in truth. Spirit and in truth. Those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And I'm trying to give that to you. It's the greatest gift I could give anybody. So let me share with you the supernatural again today. All glory to God. And then we're going to do a little uh, disclosure because Netflix is just pumping out advertising on a series called You Are Bugs. People are actually getting very upset. Like, why are y'all over plugging this? Why would Netflix be over plugging a series called You Are Bugs? Why? <laughs> well, everything that is, is what is. And I'm not trying to be all mystical and kung fu -y by saying that. I'm saying everything that is, is what is. 
and I'll show you what is. I'll just say, well, is this this? And you'll understand in just a minute. Okay, ready? Here we go. Now, just for I'm for to establish a record right now, I'm going to establish a record. You are looking at an aerial view from Google Earth of St. Peter's Basilica right here. I want you to look right here on the left. I'm circling it. I was looking at that very image from Google Earth and I was freaking out because the Vatican right here, this building right here that I'm making my cursor go over is an upside down cross. And I was like, oh my God. So uh, now, and I, I want to make sure you understand the person that is ministering to you, the Lord God whom I serve showed me that that building turns into a snake, a serpent with a crown. Okay, now the Bible says whatever makes manifest is light. The word manifest by definition means clear or obvious to the mind or to your eyes. So whatever makes clear and obvious to the mind or to your eyes is light. And Jesus is the light of the world. So I'm not showing you this because I work for Satan. <laughs> Watch. Somebody will grab that little clip right there when I said that. Oh, see, your click said it. Because they're deceivers, and that's what they do. Anyway, watch this. So while I was looking at this going, oh, my Lord, it is an upside-down cross. Look, I outlined it in red. See the upside-down cross? Now, that's a yellow keel. Now, listen, you just got to admit, no matter what anyone in the world, if anybody showed that to me, I'd be like, you got to be freaking kidding me. Upside down cross stands for Satan's church. Yeah, but how was Peter crucified? Upside down, right? Well, you know, Jesus said the very at the very time he told Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven when he renamed him Petros from Simon, son of Jonah in Matthew 16. He said, uh, yeah, I'm going to give, and Peter, I'll give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Did he say that? Yes or no? He did, Matthew 16. And guess what? Then Peter, right after Jesus tells him, hey, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever is loosed in heaven is loosed on earth. And Peter starts telling Jesus, oh no, don't go to Jerusalem because Jesus had told him, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and they're going to treat me horribly and this is going to happen to me. He's telling him what's going to happen. And and Peter steps up and says, oh, Lord, no, oh, no, Lord, be it far from thee. This is not going to happen to you. And then right then Jesus turns around and says, get me behind, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> I mean, it's like, what? What? Did Jesus call me Satan? It's like, yes. Jesus turned and called Peter Satan right then and there. Get thee behind me, Satan. Because see, Satan's down. Christ is the Petra that's up. But he'll have the keys to the kingdom of heaven to show you how to restore your eyes that have been one up, one downed. Because when your angelic essence comes down into a host body, because your 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 beginning is in heaven, it always is. So your 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 essence, Jesus is the the Lord, I'm sorry, El the Almighty God. Jesus in the flesh is Emmanuel. So El, the Almighty God, the Father of lights, created your essence. And he is a fountain of life. He produces life. The angel of the bottomless pit is a vacuum of, of life. It takes life. One gives, one takes. There's male and there's female energy. Different poles. One goes heaven, one goes to, to the pit. Male, heaven, female, pit. And I'm not talking about genitalia. I'm talking about energy. But each thing has its own representation. You ready? Okay, watch this. Now, very quickly, yes or no? Is that a keyhole with an upside down cross? It's just a yes or no. So the answer is, well, obviously it is, yes. So if the Lord God told you, and you were looking at this right here, and you were on Google Earth, and you heard the Lord God say to you, put your name in there. I'm going to put Jonathan because that's what he told me to do. Jonathan, come in at a 45 degree angle to the tip of the cross. I want to show you something. 
So I'm sitting there looking at this right here. Now imagine you're me and I'm looking right at this image right here. And I hear the Lord say, come in at a 45 degree angle to the tip of the cross right here, right here, the very tip upside down tip of the cross right here. And I'm like, okay. And as I came in on my satellite, that cross turned into that. Now just try and wrap your brain around just the significance of that alone. Okay, so the person that's speaking to you right now is the source that the Lord God in the history of the world revealed what you're looking at to you, that the Vatican is a snake. Okay, that's pretty significant. Now, I'm going to show you what he showed me this morning. You ready? <laughs> Y'all freak out. Ah! Okay, Mel, watch what happens. You see right here in the center, right, the dead center of the keel, you see that? Y'all know what's there, right? You know it's an obelisk. So there is an obelisk right here, but you see the X, like X marks the spot. See how they have it all outlined? And if you're really paying attention, you'll notice that there's eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight points, like an eight-pointed star. See it? But X marks a spot dead center. And that is very, very profound because when your soul comes into this circle right here, just imagine your light energy goes into this locked door like a key going in here. And then it gets turned upside down and the door locks. So you come in, the key gets turned upside. So you're the cross. Picture you as a little cross. You come in. Then you get turned upside down in the door locks and then you become the serpent because you got the flesh. That's what this represents. Now, let me show you what the Lord showed me today. You ready? Here you go. One more, one moment. And I'm, what I'm showing you is a dimension. There's in the center right here, this is a dimension. And what's flowing out of that dimension is light energy, you see. So I'm giving you a representation of our Father and the dimension that we come from. Our Father, He is a fountain of life. He's a fountain of life emanating from our Father. He's the creator of heavenly lights. He's the creator of your soul. He is your creator. He created Elohim, you are an Elohim, and you have become a man now. Now, you ready? Watch this. I'm going to scrunch down. There you go. There's a representation of you have an eye from heaven inside of you when you come into the system. But because the host body itself was created through parthenogenesis, that's why the Vatican is a snake with another snake birthing. So that's why the Vatican right here is a serpent and there is another darker green serpent audience hall right here coming out of this because it's a form of femalian. And I'll say that you know, this in a humorous but not humorous way, it is a uh, female form of self-procreation to start a host body reptilian host body system. Okay, now there is one serpent right here. And out of it is another serpent that has created the host body system. But right here in the middle of that keyhole, remember, if we go back and we look at this right here, here is the keyhole right here, right? Well, now, right there where X marks the spot, there had to be a first moment where there was an impregnation of the serpent race. And it was from Adam because Eve, when it says, and Eve did bring to him to Adam because Eve was seduced. The Bible says that Eve was seduced. By who? The serpent race. And whose energy is in her? The serpent, Satan. Okay, so then she does bring to Adam and it says, and he does eat. It says to burn up, to consume. Well, did you know that when you become part of this system, you immediately become part of the energy of the system. So you are begin once you begin it, you are burning the the energy from the system, and you are being burned from the system. Watch this. Here you go. Ready? So imagine this keyhole, and the first time 
a penis goes into a vagina from a from a dimensional being and what goes into it so then it goes into that dimension one goes in and one takes one gives and one receives one is a fountain of life and the other one is a vacuum of death do you understand so if i take this that's not a very if i take this image right here and see if i can slide it right here there is the vacuum of death one's goes to a dimension that is one energy which takes it all and the other one goes to a di one the other one gives the energy out so now there is a physical uh, way for you to perceive the dimensional thing that energy from one dimension is part of your consciousness. Energy from another direction is another part of your consciousness. You are the tree of the knowledge of good from up, evil from down, and the battle for your essence rages within you to destroy the one thing that you are in control of your soul you have a soul you're responsible for it and you either seek out the truth because jesus said when you seek me with all your heart you will find me in this i'm trying to give you some of the most supernatural information that's probably ever been delivered on this thing you call the earth who in the world could have shown you that parthenogenesis is what started the host body system I'm not just saying that because I think it. It was delivered by the Lord God whom I serve. And there is proof of it right there. There is one serpent birthing another serpent, forming a breeding system that the angels can come into. And the angels that come into it, you get caught in it and you become a slave to the system. So you're part of a cannibalistic system. Do you understand? You're part of a cannibal. You're your own cannibal. What happened in the Justin Timberlake video I showed you guys? Didn't he self-consume? Yes or no? Well, he was with the, he, went to, he, he left from a higher position. He was up there singing. He said it only takes a moment. And then he goes, or two. And then he walks down on the dance floor. So, but then he's got his own evil doppelganger, right? He's got a doppelganger after he says two, and then one Justin Timberlake's down on the dance floor while the other one's singing, and the one on the dance floor is being cannibalized. So everything Jonathan Clegg has told you has manifested into what is, is what is. I told you previously, I would explain what that means. Well, did Justin Timberlake end up with uh, his own doppelganger that had sunglasses on? You know why he had sunglasses on, right? Well, Elohim says, let us create man in our image. The word in our image, the first thing it says is to shade, make darker. That's why he's wearing shades. And then what happens? The one that went down, the one that went down the stairs and was on the dance floor, all the people on the dance floor cannibalized him. He was part of the cannibalistic system. And then the lady that he was dancing with that spreads her bat wings like whatever like dragon wings whatever she drools blood in his mouth to show that he's guilty of blood guiltiness you're a murderer now you're a cannibal you're one of us and you know what happens to all of us into the trunk where the worm eats you so now everything i told you before it ever manifested has now manifested tell me that's not supernatural Tell me your jaw's just like, this guy's right. So I'm trying to help you understand the system and how simple it really is. But these things called churches, I have not found one yet where they will allow the truth as what the Lord's shown me just to be passed out among the other people like I've, I've gone to churches and said hey check out the $20 bill see the twin towers on it and they're like oh yeah they literally had a spy watching me and they said hey can we talk to you for a sec I'm like yeah and I got up and I walked down they opened this door to this office and they go could you come in here please and I'm 
I was like, yeah, what's up? And they said, well, you're not allowed to show people that what you show that $20 bill thing. Excuse me? You don't want me showing people that the bombing of the Twin Towers is on the... No, you're not allowed to show that here. I'm looking you right in the eye. That's exactly what they told me in a church. You're not allowed to show the bombing of the Twin Tower on the $20 bill to anybody in that church. <laughs> I said, okay, so y'all don't allow truth here. Okay, I got it. Who's running that church then? Satan. Because, see, you will know the truth. Ready here, you will know the truth. I just did it. You'll know the truth. And the truth will redouble your eyes. It'll set you free. You'll no longer be fear, have the fear of death. You'll no longer be a slave to your slave masters. You'll be set free. Your spirit will be free. Your, not your, your soul will be set free. Your spirit will be converted. There's a difference, spirit and soul, all that. Did you know you have a double spirit before you get converted? You have a superhuman angel demon. Angel is that essence that goes up. And I'll show you the picture. So you have two essences. You have the superhuman angel demon. And you have the angelic essence. And then you have the demonic essence. They're, they are in opposition. And the flesh is run by the twin female energy. That's why they built that thing called the Vatican. To show that they run it. That's why there's a, a beer brand called Dos Equis. Why would you have a Dos Equis hat? Why is the guy always got a female on both sides of him? Let's just examine it. Like, here, here's the most interesting man in the world. They're making fun of him, but there he is. Okay, let's see. There he is again. Wait, there's two different girls. He's wearing different clothes. There he is again. And if you have eyes to see and you just squint your eyes a little bit, watch this. This is a big horn sheep, but you got to know how to view it. These are the horns going out. See the horn going out here? There's the horn going out here. The eyes right here. Eyes right here. And this is the snoot. of. This is a big horn sheep. But what's superimposed on the big horn sheep? A lion. See the lion? A female lion. Because that's the female system. Get the male in the, their system. Why are they facing back to back? That's the top of the hindecogram. So see, everything that I'm showing you, I have been taught by the Lord himself. Why do you think there's a big canopy? By the way, in the Bible, the word canopy uh, is associated with Lucifer. Thou art the anointed cherub angel that covers with flesh. So here is a kid. The word uh, covers says canopy. Well, here is the canopy in the Vatican. Here's the dragon with its mouth open right here. It's probably pretty easy for you to see the dragon. There's the red eye. There's the red eye. There's the nose. There's his open mouth. And then look, now it's the queen of heaven. There's the, there's the eye. There's the eye. There's the mouth. There's the pink face. But She's wearing a dragon headdress, you know, like the Mayans used to wear the crazy headdresses. Here is the Vatican's, you know, uh, there was this there was this thing they were giving everybody. See that thing right there that the lady's stuffing in his arm? Uh, why is there a woman on each side of him right here? Why did they make it into a coin? Why is he pointing at the number zero? Because they want zero mil energy in the system. That's why. I mean, let's go over here. Why is there a locust on the foundational pillar? Because Satan's kingdom is locusts. In the pit, there are locusts. And all the angels that go to the pit are assimilated into a locust by that connection to your own worm. That's why the Bible says, I will restore to you the years that the locust is eaten, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the great army I sent among you side by side. And the reason that happened is because you were willing to go against the Most High. That's why uh, the Lord says, Who's, who has turned Jacob over to the spoiler and Israel to the robbers? Was it because, see, they're the spoilers. They're the robbers. They're robbing your soul right here. The locust is. 
the dragon female system is robbing your soul. See, people don't know their Bible. People haven't read their Bible. They haven't read these stories that are like, wow, this doesn't make any sense. This story, but it does make sense when you've been converted because the Bible is encrypted. That's why the Bible says, I will restore to you the years the locust is eaten, the palmer worm. What does that mean? I mean, well, I'm showing you now because I'm converted and the Lord used me as a conduit to show you what the scriptures mean. And he gave me a gift that proves it. There's a dragon right there. Who's the dragon? Well, the dragon is the enemy of the Lord God, right? Uh, I, that great dragon was cast out. Revelation 17, that great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, they're inside a building that's, in, uh, that's a serpent. So there's the dragon right there. Right there, there it is. There's a the dragon. And they're inside of a serpent. That's pretty. Do you understand how serious this is now? <laughs> do you understand what you're getting? Do you understand the treasure I just laid out in front of you? Do you understand this is more valuable than all the money in the freaking world? They're they're in it. They're inside of a snake right now. There is a dragon on the corner post, and it turns to a locust because Satan is the king of the locusts, and they're singing to Lucifer, dawning his own creation, which is the flesh. That's why they worship Lucifer. He's the flesh. And see, there, look. See, can someone tell me that's not a, a locust? There's a locust. There's a locust. See, the Lord gave me the ability to see it all so I can show it to you to prove that the word is perfect. And that's why the Dos Equis guy, because X represents female energy. See, Dos Equis? Well, here, look. I mean, just look at the system, the right side up, upside down, interlocking triangle. That's the middle of the hindectogram for those of you that have been paying attention. And now you know why somebody like uh, Lady Gaga would have her arms in the akimbo position. That's called the akimbo power position. And it represents the top of the hindectogram. Triangles going opposite directions. Are you saying the split diamond's evil? I am. And anyway, and so here you go. And so she's the serpent race. That's why there's a serpent on her dress. And that's why the the spear that's going through her vagina, representing a penis, it's going into the mouth of a bug because that's where your energy goes into the mouth of a bug. Because the one that's in the pit that's running this whole thing is the king of the insects, which is a bug. So now it's becoming very obvious why would netflix be plugging so hard why are they plugging a series called you are bugs and people are getting really upset they're like why are they keep plugging this so much okay already we've seen it they're like over advertising why would they do that because it's true we are <sighs> Let me show you a little graph real quick, just so you can put this in your head. Up. Anna, that's up in Greek. So when you see it in the Bible, uh, you know what Anastasis means? Anastasia. Anastasia. Anna is up and then standing. That's what the word resurrection is. The standing up again. That's what the word resurrection means. The standing up. You're resurrected and you are part of an insurrection. It got you thrown down. And then you're resurrected, resurrected. Get it? It's always equal and opposites. Jesus is up. Satan is down. Light is up. Dark is down. Good is up. Evil is down. Heaven's up. Hell is down. Okay, so now I've given you some just real series basics uh, let's do a little more language of angels so you guys can see i'm going to start sharing the language of angels with you guys because i've got a lot of it um here's a uh, speak of the devil the movie called nefarious i mentioned it in the last video i forgot to show you this so here it is where he's got a set of eyes looking at you and there's a face looking to the left and a face looking to the right but he's fully online with his wide eyes looking right at you. So the one that's taken over the duality, so there's a face to the right, there's a face to the left. Does that remind you of anything like Jesus on a cross with one to the right, one to the left? But he wants to be the one in the middle to reconcile both of your halves back to God through the cross, making one new man from the two, thus making 
peace because he's the prince of peace and he'll make peace between the evil you and the good you and they'll be reconciled back and you'll be back in touch with your creator and you can be sealed until the day of redemption and you can be at peace while you're facing the obvious into the world coming right at you right so anyway my goal is to give you the greatest gift that i could give anyone if i had the choice to give the people i love the most i care about the most the people that are closest to me if i could give them a hundred billion dollars or their own island or whatever give them perfect health give them whatever or give them this, this is what i give them i'd say this if i had to choose i'd say this is what i'm giving you because it's it's more important that's why what should it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul that's all you own the only thing that is yours that you have any decision making capability over is actually your soul and that's what the mark of the beast is about they want you handing over your free will to them by accepting the mark and if you take the mark you may get to live a couple more years, but you're guaranteed eternal damnation. So that's when it's time to step up and say, read between the lines and say no. Because that's the only thing that you really have, that one little, that one inch. Did you all ever see the movie V for Vendetta? The little notes that uh, V was passing to EV, talking about the one little inch. Even though the, I like the movie V from Vendetta, but they, they kind of flipped the strip a little. Still a good movie, but uh, yeah, you only have uh, you only have free will over the one thing that you own, which is what your soul. And so that's the one thing you can say. No, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do what you want me to do because it's evil and it's wrong. I told you, I was offered a deal by the district attorney to say, if you say, if you plead guilty, well, you, there'll be no, no charges. We will wipe it off. You know, we'll give you deferred adjudication, whatever it is. And you don't, you don't have to do anything. Don't worry about it. All you have to do is say guilty. And it all, but if, if you go to court, now here's the thing. When I went to that court case and my mother was involved, my mom, that's what they were using my mom to say that I assaulted my mom. I was like, okay, that's totally not true, and I'm not going to plead guilty to something that's a lie. But they were trying to take my kids to make them Catholic and all this other stuff. And I said, no, I'm not going to plead guilty. And even when my mom was on the stand, I'm looking you in the eye, my mom was on the stand, and my attorney said, Mrs. Kleck, would you lie in this courtroom? Jonathan has told me that this has nothing to do with an assault at all, that this is just a way for you guys to try and get control of his children because you want them raised Catholic, which is what it was all about. And my attorney said, Ms. Kleck, would you lie in this courtroom in order to achieve that? And you know what my mom said? Probably. I was like, what? I was like, oh my God, my mom just... So when the Bible says your worst enemies will be members of your own household, it's a spiritual thing that's running them. My mom was Catholic. Uh, the girl that, uh, you know, had my children at that point, I wasn't, I didn't marry her. She set me up. She told me she was on birth control and she lied on purpose because she wanted to get pregnant. So she thought, well, that will force Jonathan to be with me because I'm pregnant with his kid. And I caught her lying about everything. She lied about birth control and all that. And she's like, too bad. You know, I was like, that's sick. That's evil. So, my mom said, probably. My attorney went, excuse me, did you just say probably? My mom said, probably. So my attorney said, your honor, she, your, your witness just said, that your, your like only witness said she would probably lie in order to achieve this to make the kids be raised Catholic. And the word probably means more than likely you were willing to lie in this court of law. He said, Your Honor, we just have to show a reasonable doubt. And it was a bench trial. It wasn't a jury trial. So the judge got to decide. And it was so stupid obvious that the other the other side said, yeah, we rest. We're done. My attorney said, we're done. We just proved your number one witness said that they would more than likely lie right now in order to achieve what Jonathan said it was all about. 
And you know what happened? The judge said, I'll be back in five minutes. She came back. Okay, everybody rise. Mr. Kleck, boom, I find you guilty. I'm like, did that hooker just say guilty? I was like, dude, she actually said guilty. I find you guilty of assault against my own mom. I was like, that's insane. You guys have lost your freaking minds. But that's what's coming for everybody right now. I got to live it out first. So the, your worst enemies will be members of your own household. Uh, father will turn against son, brother against brother, mother against daughter. All that stuff will happen because I've already seen it and lived it, but I know the reason why. It's a spiritual thing. Because a monster called the serpent runs the, the host body system. And all the children belong to the serpent because they're his children. They're the flesh. So he'll do whatever he wants with those children. And if you try and fight and do the right thing and have your children raised Christian and, and Bible believing and you're not going to succumb to their bullshit, they're going to come after you. They came after me. I got two one-year sentences. And then when they put me in, I was preaching to uh, the people in in, uh, in my pod. I was preaching to everybody, showing, check out the version. It's a dead sheep. I literally had the sergeant call me down to his office and say, "Man, look, the gangbangers down there, they're mad. They're they're going to they're going to come get you, dude." And he said, "And I can't protect you." That's what the sergeant told me. He took me down to his office. He said, "You need to quit showing that stuff to people." I said, "I can't do that." I said, "I have to show them. I mean, I can't not." And he said, "I can't protect you, Mr. Cleck. There you you can get killed." And I said, I understand. Thank you for your concern. I appreciate it. And there was one gangbanger in particular that was always trying to, and I finally just said, you know what? You probably hit like a little girl. Let's get after it. Let's go right now. And he didn't do anything. Nothing happened. Well, like a day after the Sarge took me down to his, his office, you know, the guard came and got me a click. Sarge wants to see you. I go down to his office. He tells me, yeah, they're, you know, the gang guys are going to get you. I'm like, I'm not going to stop preaching. And he's like, oh, shit. The next day, guess what? Clack down to the office. And guess what happened? He made me a trustee. And for doing the right thing, instead of going and doing laundry or going and doing kitchen or whatever job everybody else, you know, everyone got assigned jobs every day. You had to go do whatever it is they told you to go do. But instead, I got to go to Sarge's office. He showed me how he liked his coffee, making pots of coffee and read magazines and hang out in his office all day long. That was my job. But the Lord gave me that job because I was faithful. And we're all we're all coming to the point in time where everyone's going to everyone that doesn't leave everyone that doesn't get called away you will be put to the test just like I was. Uh, do y'all understand how many times I've been tested? Like the story I just told you. I mean, when you're locked up in jail and you know the gangs are going to come for you and the sergeant's telling you, you either quit preaching or these guys are going to take you out, bro. And I'm like, I'm not going to stop. That's how you know where someone's heart is. So when I read the comments the other day about the, you know, people that give themselves these, you know, inflated monikers. And then they sit there and they talk hatred and, oh, you're so stupid. How do you not know that Trump's one of them? I'm like, I was one of them. Anyone, Matthew, Mark, James, John, we're all one of them until we get converted. So if you don't leave room in your heart for everyone to get converted, well, then you don't leave room in your heart for yourself. Now, are there certain people it's okay to say, well, this is what I've seen. This is what I, I know about this. That's okay. But you can't hate them. Okay. Anyway, we're about ready to do a, um, we're about ready to do a little, who is Jesus? Do y'all know who he is? He's El, the almighty God in the flesh. Who's Elohim? Elohim is Genesis one. Let us create. God said, let us create man in our image. Did you know the churches try and tell you that's the father, son, and the Holy Spirit? Bull. Shit. No, it's not. That's why Elohim says of the Supreme God. Who's the Supreme God? El, the Almighty God, our Father in Heaven. When you pray our Father, 
You're praying to El, the Almighty God. You're not praying to Elohim. Elohim is God's. It's the natural body of the Supreme God. You're not. So if you don't know who Elohim is in El, the Almighty God, and you don't, haven't understood it. Now, here's the other thing. There's times where the word Elohim is used generically, but it requires the Holy Spirit and prayer to understand. But I can show you now very simply. I'm going to show you a video that's got other, you know, like I did videos in the past and those videos got chopped up and put together with, you know, another video I did. And Zach made a seven minute video that shows you who El is, who Jesus is, El, the Almighty God in the flesh, Imanu El. Imanu means with us is El, the Almighty God. Okay. <sighs> Our Father is the fountain of life. He emanates life. The, the pit is a vacuum of death. It takes a light. You got to get out of that trap. So if you don't get converted out of that thing, it's a problem. Let me show you something that'll blow your mind. You ready? Here you go. So, see that right there? Okay. Fountain of life is our God, a fountain of life. Okay, hang on one sec. The enemy, that, that dimensional going into the pit, hell hath increased herself. So, this is female. Hell hath increased herself beyond measure. The time of her judgment has come. The earth, uh, the host body system. Okay, her sins are piled as high as heaven. You ready? Watch this. These guys pray with their heads to the ground. Do you know why? Do you know what they're doing there? Do you know why they're all going? They're trying to work their way from the outside to the inside. They do seven loops. And in the corner is what's called the Kaaba, the Kaaba stone. And I want to show you the Kaaba. And so they go around, and right here in the corner, right here, is the Kaaba, the black stone. And they try and put their head in there and kiss it. Okay, well, I'm just going to say it. It's a, it sure looks. Uh, just like the rudimentary vagina, doesn't it? What's so fascinating is, is that they have it done with metal to where on the outside, there's a reflection that's right side up. The second you put your head in that hole, guess what? You get inverted. As soon as you go into the hole, you get inverted. One takes life, one gives life. You get it? Watch this. Think about the symbology in this. Just like an eye, they're going in a circle. There's the corner. That's the goal. Everybody wants to touch the corner, but look how it's done to where outside, inside. By the way, if you stand right here, look, if you stand right in front of it, you'll see your reflections on both sides. You'll see your reflection on both sides and then if you go into it it turns you upside down do you get it there it is that's why I, and i'm you know it's so fascinating most people don't even know what they worship it's crazy so if they're going in a circle they're going in a circle does that just look like energy going into a pit or no There you go. Now, hopefully that helped you just simply understand heaven is a dimension. The pit is a dimension. And here I am stuck in the middle with you. And we're in the middle. And you're in a prison suit. And you have one shot at getting home. That's to turn back to the Lord your God. Confess your sins. He will cleanse you of all the sins that you've committed in the flesh. You'll be sealed until the day of redemption and you can live out the rest of your life without the fear of death and without the fear of judgment. Does that sound good? <laughs> but see, you got to know the truth. You will know the truth. And I always do this, the truth. 
you were inverted because you're an Elohim. So the Bible says, who can make straight that which Elohim has turned upside down? Well, where do you see Elohim? Genesis 1, Elohim said, let us create man in our image. So male and female created he him. In the image of Elohim created he him, male and female created he them. And so it's an inbred sex party. In a, I mean, just if you want to just get down to blatant. Okay, here we go. Ready? This is just going to be an eight-minute video of showing you who the Lord God is. All right. So anyway, so here we go. I'm going to let you watch this. Uh, and please pay attention to the scriptures. Please stop and read the scriptures that are being delivered. Please take a moment to realize the difference between El, the Almighty God, and Elohim, because you're Elohim. The Bible says you're Elohim. Psalm 82, I have said ye are gods. I'm going to show it to you real quick. I think it's important uh, to always show you the scriptures. That is the trademark. I always come with the word of God. I never come and sub try and substantiate something unless it is substantiated in the word of God. And I will show it to you. Now, here's a really fascinating scripture real quick. Look at this. So, see, because you're in your you're your own cannibal. And I tried to show this to you, the other guy with the Donald Trump thing. But look, if you bite and devour, devour, look, kata esteo, down. So it's from the root down, kata, and then esteo, to eat. So look. If you devour one another, take heed that ye not be consumed to use up, to consume, to use up one another. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh lusteth against the spirit of God and the spirit against the flesh. There it is, guys. It shows you the cannibalism right here. If you're not born of the Spirit, you all are just devouring one another. The only way not to be part of the cannibalistic system is to be born out of it. You get your eye uh, turned up. Your whole, your whole body becomes full of light. And you are no longer attached to the pit. Because that's what the flesh is. It's a worm attached to the pit. I know it's hard to believe, right? Okay, here we go. Let's go to let's go to Psalms Psalms 82. It is not arguable anyone that wants to argue with me, you are arguing with the word of God. They know not neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Here it is. Say these words out loud. I have said say it out loud. Ye are gods. And all of you, not some of you, not part of you, all of you are children of the Most High. El Yon, the highest, most supreme. All of you are children of the Most High, El Yon. But you shall die like men and you shall fall like one of the princes, like because we fell. Now, ready? I have said ye are gods. See it right there? Gods. Hebrew word for Hebrew word 430. Does it say it right there? I have said ye are gods 430. Yes or no? Does it say gods? Does it say of the supreme God? Yes or no? Does it say angels? Yes or no? Does it say judges? Yes or no? Okay, so here's the thing. Jesus quoted that psalm when his people were trying to kill him. And they were trying to kill him because he said he was the son of God. And then he says, well, wait a minute. Your own scriptures say, I have said ye are gods. So then he says, and by the way, the scriptures can't be broken, guys. So now he put everybody that wanted to stone him on notice. Nobody can do a darn thing or they'll be breaking the scriptures. Watch. John 10, 34. Ready? 
So for what good works are you going to stone me? They said, we're going to stone you for blasphemy because you being a man make yourself equal to God. And Jesus answered them. Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I have said. Ye are gods. See it right there? And if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. Okay, so he was quoting Psalm 82, and so it's not arguable. And right here, the word gods is theos, deity, but you're in the you're in the New Testament. So you have to go to Psalm 82, which is what he was quoting. Do not your own scriptures say in Psalm 82, I said you're gods? Well, what are you going to do with that? So now you're going to stone me? You can't stone him because the scriptures go against what you're trying to do. Okay. Okay, so now very quickly, my goal is to give you the confidence to be able to face what's coming. Hopefully, if you've been converted, you have the key of David. Go to Revelation 3, a letter to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. I'm giving you the key of David. You know what the key of David means? It's the key of love. That's what the word David means, love. I'm giving you right now the key of love. They just took down the Baltimore, the, the bridge in Baltimore is called the Francis Scott Key Bridge. It was very significant that they did it. As a matter of fact, the very day that they did it, someone had given me this. Someone gave me this as a gift. It was very supernatural. It's got a key on it. And I'm the guy that the Lord God gave the keys to the kingdom. So you should go read Revelation 3, a letter to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, because he's got the key of love. He knows the truth that you got to turn it up. You got to turn everything upside down to see the truth. I've placed before you an open door. Lord, I need help. Show me this. Help me show everybody an open door. Communication. And you have not denied my name, the authority that is Christ up. Okay, now, again, watch the next eight minutes, and then I'm going to wrap this up. Then we're going to do, we're going to do a communion tomorrow. I'm going to get it all ready so we can do it tomorrow. But I'm telling you, what you're going to do tonight, you're going to go in your room and you're going to forgive anyone and everyone that's done anything against you. Because if you take communion and you have hatred in your heart, you bring condemnation on yourself. So don't do it. So if any of you folks are watching that got blocked after making your Trump statements, search your own hearts. And then I saw some people that wrote comments and said, you know what? Thank you, Jonathan. You're right. I was harboring resentment in my heart against Trump. Well, good for you. Good for you. That's what humility is. That's what you do. You you say, shit, you know what? You're right. I did that. And just admit it. That's what being humble is. You humble yourself and you're like, you know what? Guilty. That's the only way you get saved. The people that turn there are neck at me. Oh, how dare you, Jonathan? Uh, you know what? Y'all are just, you didn't get it. I actually had people send me emails. Oh, I was on board with you until you did it. Like, you know what? <laughs> okay. Well, when you can show the world what the Lord's let me show the world, and you can then come and try and condemn me because you got admonished. Well, okay, you're welcome. I'm trying to help you, but you have to receive it. If you don't receive it, then it didn't help you. Okay. I love you in Christ. Here you go. Eight minutes of some older video stuff. Uh, this should really help you out. If you want to know uh, Bible, it's called Bible Unlocked and it's an eight minute, 29 second video. Here we go. Ready? If I could give my best friend anything, it would be what I'm giving you right now, the truth of the Bible. Isaiah 7, there it is. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel is the name given to Jesus, prophesied the coming of the Messiah. You shall call his name Emmanuel. So, Emmanuel, it's a conjunction of 
5973 and Hebrew word 410. The first word 5973, which is the Amanu part, it says it means with us is. So now I'll go back. And then the second part of the word is Hebrew word 410, and it is El, the Almighty God. The name of the Almighty God is El. The Old Testament was the Messiah is going to come. They're all waiting for the Messiah. You're going to call his name Emmanuel. Well, Joseph and Mary both had a vision. They were visited each by an angel, and they were both told when he gets here, you're going to name him Jesus. It's Jesus, actually. It means the self-existent, eternal Jehovah that opens wide. It's a product of a Hebrew conjunction. I'm going to pause it. What I'm showing you right now is that the name Jesus is Jesus, and what it means is the Hebrew word, the, the Hebrew equivalent is the self-existent eternal Jehovah that opens wide the door because your your host body is a prison. And to open the door, you open the eye. You, you turn the other direction. You're like, oh, I can see everything. Oh, my God. Why is the Vatican a snake? Why is the image of the Virgin a dead sheep? What's going on? Freak out. Okay, here we go. Jesus means the self-existing eternal Jehovah that opens wide. Now you'll get to see that in the word. Because he opens wide the dungeon that we're in. Because your host body is that dungeon. So now to Isaiah 14. And we're going to go look at what Lucifer has been told. So Lucifer said, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. Let's look at the word throne. To plump fill Apollos, to cover for clothing or secrecy, to conceal self. Let's look at the root of that word. To be covered with flesh. I will exalt my throne. Okay, now I want to jump in real quick. Do you know why the Vatican, the, the canopy, so Lucifer is the anointed cherub that is the flesh. He covers with flesh to hide yourself. You ever wonder why hide and seek? They say, Ali, Ali, income free. You know, that's what Jesus said on the cross, right? Ali, Ali, Lama Sabachthani. Yes, L, L. He was sick, crying out to L, the Almighty God. L, L, it's pronounced Ali, Ali, Lama Sabachthani. So he's crying out L, L, twice. Ali, 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 income free. Ali Ali oxen free. What do oxen have? They have a double yoke. They have a yoke over their necks, like a W. Ali Ali oxen free. Get it? Ali Ali income free. You're hiding from El, the Almighty God. Turn back to him and just say, I'm sorry. I know you're there. I lied. I did this. I... Hide and seek is a manifestation of the reality of the Bible being true. Uh huh. There you go throne, my flesh, the place where I'm hiding, above the stars, the princes of God. Now, see El, the Almighty God. There's no doubt that the one that Lucifer is out to arise above is El. Son of man, say to the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God. So the Lord God is the self-existent eternal Jehovah. Jesus is Yehoshua, the self-existent eternal Jehovah that opens wide. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up. And thou hast said, I am El, the Almighty God. I sit in the seat, the population, the assembly, the dwelling place. I sit in the seat of Elohim, gods of the Supreme God. In the I, want, I want you to think about that, what you're looking at. So, see, Lucifer said, I sit in the seat. I sit in the population of Elohim. Well, who's Elohim? You are. I am. Donald Trump. Everybody. Everybody's Elohim. Have I not said you are Elohim? All of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men. And who sits in the center of all the Elohim? Lucifer. That's why you got to get converted. Because he's in the midst of you, and he's running the show. And until you turn back to El, the Almighty God, then the one that owns you is the one that owns the flesh. Oh, he's 
gods of the supreme God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not El, although you set your heart as the heart of Elohim. So the Lord God is telling Lucifer, hey, buddy, you said you're El, the almighty God. You're not El. Although you set your heart as the heart of Elohim, and although you sit in the seat of Elohim, that doesn't make you El, the almighty God. Genesis 1, so Elohim created man in his own image. Elohim, gods of the supreme God. So Elohim created to cut down as a formative process. So Elohim created man in his own image. You know what? Would you guys mind if right now I just stopped and showed you guys a Skittles commercial that is exactly what you're looking at? Do you believe I can show you a Skittles commercial using the language of angels to prove to you right now that what you're looking at in Genesis 1, Skittles did a commercial to mock you? Okay. Let me do that real quick because it's pretty crazy. Okay, for those of you guys that remember the Ian Bud Light commercial, Ian gets his own black doppelganger. Don Cheadle is dressed identically after Ian takes the bait, which is what? Hey, I'll, Kelly, hey, if I give you this, are you willing, are you up for whatever happens? And he goes to a bachelorette party. And on the way, he gets styled by Minka Kelly. And she puts a coat on him. And she dresses him. And then Don Cheadle gets in the elevator. You know, going up, going down. Going down, going down to a floor. And he gets in the with Don Cheadle. And he goes to a party. And he's dressed identically to Don Cheadle. So Ian got his own doppelganger. No different than Justin Timberlake. So they're showing you right in front of your face. And here is... The whole, here is Genesis 1 in a commercial, in a Skittles commercial. Okay, ready? To cut down is a formative process. Mm. These new Smoothie Mix Skittles are delicious. I know. Two different flavors blended together in each one. How Two different flavors blended together in each one. And they're saying, like, how is that possible? How could they do that? And that's the point. Orange mango. And then listen to the words that they say. And then peach pear. I read their language. The reason they said orange mango, they want the letter O and the letter M put together. And then when he says peach pear, they want the letter P, uh, 1616, put together. And then when the guy walks by and says, stop your jibber jabber, they want JJ put together, 1010. And then I'll read to you what their language is. Watch. To cut down is a formative process. Gather each one. How can they blend together two things as different as an orange and a mango? It's unbelievable. Angel what and a demon. A peach pear. A peach blended together with a pear? Now that's an unusual combination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you two sheep boys, stop that jibber jabbing. Blend the rainbow. Blend the rainbow. Okay, what's rainbow? Light. Blend the rainbow. So you just saw a commercial that was biblical. Why? Wow. Okay, so remember, to cut down is a formative process. So here's two sheep eating off a cut down tree. There's one's black and one's white. You two sheep boys, stop that jibber jabber. Because in Genesis 1 was the formation of a host body system. Let us create man. What just your so they were making uh, a box to put the spiritual beans in. It's called, so here we go. Ready? J, J. J is 10. J is 10. Stop that jibber jabber. Okay, so let's go look up 10, 10 in the Bible. J, J means the house of Baal, the habitation of Baal. Baal is a pagan god for the devil. So definition of 10, 10, Beth, Baal, Meon. Beth, Baal, Meon. House of Baal, the habitation, okay, of Baal. Okay, so that's what JJ stands for. Stop that jibber jabber. Okay, now, here's where he says, in each one, how can I, they blend together two things as different as an orange and a mango. 
two like how is it possible that they could blend together two things that are so different as o and m orange and mango if by any means if somehow if they could somehow see if by any means if somehow possible if by any means see it o m o m orange mango and then what are they saying in the commercial in each one how can they blend together two things as different as an orange and a mango if by any means there it is right there proof now here you go what about a peach pear now that's an unusual combination what about a peach pear a peach blended together with a pear pp now that's an unusual combination so then let's look at pp in the bible in the bible so here it says a sojourner aliens foreigners immigrants sojourners see because we are the sojourners and they blended us together do you get it to cut down is a formative process cut down what the stars bring them into a host body system the house of baal because your temple your house is the house of satan now you're getting to see a really serious spiritual gift try and argue with it anyway there it is unbelievable all right here we go back to this so elohim created man in his own image in the image of elohim created he him male and female created he them and it's the sheep is always what's being destroyed in the vatican a big dead sheep hey johnny i drew a picture of you why'd you draw a picture of a dead sheep on my face do you know who you're speaking with? Yes, I do. Created man in his own image. Okay, so here's the creation of man in the image of Elohim. It means to shade a phantom, figuratively an illusion. Resemblance hints a representative figure, especially an idol, a vain show. Let me go to Isaiah again. Ready? How art thou fallen from heaven, the Lucifer, son of the morning? And how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Back to Genesis 1. So Elohim created man in his own image. Bara, to create, to cut down as a formative process. Okay, so what was his work? Elohim created man in his own image in the image of elohim created he him male and female created he them so from genesis 1 it says elohim said let us make man in our vain show that's what it says consider the work of elohim for who can make that straight the word straight means to equalize okay now we're in ecclesiastes 7 consider the work of elohim for who can make straight, that means set right, that which Elohim has turned upside down. See, I told you, the whole system is angels being inverted by coming into the system. When you come into the system, like when you stick your head in the Kaaba, it inverts you. Going down the drain. You get it? This is supernatural, guys. To set in order that which he the word straight means to equalize to set in order that which he elohim has made crooked turned upside down and you know what the thing he turned upside down was us our essence from above when you come into the system your your essence of what you are you get inverted because lucifer's in the midst of you you have to turn back to the Lord God and admit your guilt. Your guilty is charged. There's a double you. There's a good you and a bad you. The only thing that will ever work is a spiritual conversion where Lucifer's out and Jesus stands up in the middle of you. The Bible says, I have said ye are Elohim. Hebrew word 430 is God's is Elohim. I have said you are Elohim and all of you are children of the Most High. The Most High is El. Yon, and it means the supreme most high but you shall die like men and shall fall from heaven like one of the princes the magistrates master prince head person that had rule 
What makes this even more powerful is Jesus quoted the scripture. So you go down to John. So they're going to stone Jesus. And, and they can't. He says, for what good works have I showed you that you're going to stone me for? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy because thou being a man makest thyself God. And Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law in Psalm 82? I said, ye are gods. And then he says, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the son of God. If I do not if I do not the works of my father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe me not, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. There's a double you. There's a good you and a bad you. The original thing, the woman, it's the opposite of the Lord God's goodness. It's the exact opposite. Instead of light, it's darkness. Instead of love, it's hate. Instead of kindness, it's vitriol. When you get into a host body system, you have a superhuman angel, demon spirit that runs you. The Bible told you this in Ephesians 2 and other scriptures. It said, when you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which is the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. The word spirit right here is pneuma, superhuman, an angel, demon. The angel part goes comes from above the demon part comes from below the demon part from below is female energy the the angel from above is male energy our father in heaven there's a king above and there's a queen below christ's purpose was to make one new man from the two thus making peace all right guys now let me pause this, see what's going on. Don't know what. Hmm. This is very strange. Okay, I'm not sure what that all is, but. Okay, guys, there it is. I love you in Christ. I don't know what else to do for you except give you the absolute truth that the Lord's given me. None of it's arguable. All of it's perfection by the scriptures and physical representations that the Lord got himself. He gave me the Vatican to show you. He gave me all this information to show you. It comes with power. It comes with evidence. It comes with absolute, incredible, supernatural evidence that the Word of God is true. These churches, they won't even allow me to show someone a $20 bill that's got the Twin Towers bombing on. You know why? They want to keep you in darkness. That's the goal of Elohim, to keep everyone in darkness. So anyway... I love you guys in Christ, peace and grace. Y'all get ready for communion. Go get your bread, your grape juice, your wine, whatever you're going to do. And we're going to do that tomorrow. So I'm giving you a one day heads up. Uh, I may record it tonight and then have it ready for tomorrow morning. So I'll just let it go then. I love you guys in Christ. Peace and grace.